Good evening, and welcome to the October 9, 2017 Florida City Council meeting. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <laughs> Clerk, please call the roll. Jones. Yes. Egan? Here. Caputa? Here. Childra? Here. Hankey? Here. Pagano? Here. Parson? Here. Siam? Here. Lee? Here. Um, first, I see there's a lot of McClure North students here taking a class, so I just want to welcome you all tonight. The next item on the agenda is the approval of minutes. Are there any corrections or additions to the meeting minutes and executive meeting minutes of September 19th, 2017? Hearing none, Councilman Parson moves to approve the minutes, seconded by Mr. Hankey. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The meeting minutes are approved. I would like to make an, a motion to amend the agenda from a sorry, message from the Council. Seconded. Seconded. Seconded by Mr. Childra. All in favor? Aye. 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 The City Council recently received an email from Mary Elizabeth Dorsey concerning her involvement as a prosecuting attorney in the case of Florissant versus Paul Schneider. This communication became the subject of a post-dispatch article and the Council then received a letter from David Nauman, the attorney involved in the case, in which Mr. Nauman shared his viewpoint. Every member of the City Council has received phone calls and messages from Florissant residents asking questions about the events and questioning whether the Council is going to take some action. The City Council is a legislative body and the power and authority of this legislative body is set forth in the Florissant City Charter and applicable with the state statutes. Floors and council members, in conjunction with the city attorney and a second attorney, reviewed the charter and the state law. And the city council has no investigative authority nor any power to address the issues being raised. We encourage those involved to address any issues or complaints to the proper authorities so that those authorities can act appropriately. The members of this council are extremely frustrated by the situation, but cannot get involved in a matter that is beyond our authority. Mr. Caputa. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, I make a motion that we um, submit this to the city as a press release and to be put on the um, official website of the city of Florissant. Seconded by Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is now a matter of record. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is hearing from citizens. This is a time to speak to the council on any issue not necessarily on the agenda tonight. Please remember that this is not a question and answer period. If you would like to speak to any of us after the meeting, we would be happy to speak with you. If you are here for a public hearing, please wait and speak when the public hearing is announced. First, Kevin O'Donnell. Good evening. Please state your name and address. Good evening. My name is Kevin O'Donnell. 512 Rancho Lane, Florissant, Missouri, 63031. I'm here tonight just to uh, congratulate the city, the city council, the administrators, the department heads or whatever, for a fine uh, fall festival yesterday. I wasn't able to make it to all the events because of my limited uh, mobility, but uh, it, was a, it was a very nice event. 
And I wish it would last two days because it was so much fun yesterday that I had just a little while I was there that I think that maybe we should make it two days, maybe a Saturday and Sunday. That's all I have. <laughs> oh, and, and thank you. Thank you, Karen Goodwin. I know you put a lot of work into this every year. So thank you very much. Thank you. Vipul Bhagat, is this, are you here for a resolu uh, are you here for later? You want to wait until the liquor license comes up? Okay. Jamal Darris? Good evening. Please state your name and address for the record. Jamal Davis, 170, Davis. Duquette Lane, Florida and Reserve. Um, I know you addressed, the council addressed the issue regarding the mayor and as a legislative body, um, I feel that there, you know, you all have the power to, you know, enact ordinances and and change the status quo. And so that should be something that should be strongly considered. I uh, emailed all of the aldermen, um, all the council members on the board. Um, and so I'll just share the email that I sent since I didn't get a reply back from anyone on the council. So as a resident, dear council members, as a resident of the city of Florissant, I'm writing this email as a concerned constituent. Recently it has come to light that the mayor has allegedly abused the power that has been entrusted to him by the citizens of Florissant. As a police officer, I find it very alarming and discerning because as community servants, we must hold ourselves to a higher standard. Those standards include having a transparent and integrity-centered form of government. I, along with the citizens of Florissant, would like to know what you as our elected voices would do to address these egregious allegations leveled against the mayor. And so like I said, you know, as a legislative body, in the times that we are currently dealing with, as far as transparency with government, we have to hold ourselves to a standard and we have to be transparent with our actions. And Mr. Mayor, you have a son that you want the absolute best for, as with anyone who would want to look out for their son, but there, there's a line that when it gets crossed and your abuse of your power kind of takes charge of that situation, that's an issue. And it's concerning and it's alarming. Like I say, I myself am a public servant, and so I'm held to that same higher standard that you are, Mr. Mayor. And so as a council, even though per charter there's nothing that you can do, that's something that I think you all can explore as, as far as passing ordinances and looking forward so that the trust that, that needs to be instilled in city government can be instilled in city government. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Jackie? Yes, Mr. Regan. I request the floor for a moment. Sir, Sir Mr. Davis. Oh. Uh, I did not receive any email from you, and I, I'm hearing from my council members that not one of us received your email, so uh, I'll have to give you an apology that, that I didn't get back to you, but I did not receive your name, your, your email. Had I received it, I would have responded to you. I, I don't doubt that you sent it. Uh, Ward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 at floresandmo.com? Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Now, each individual. We've had problems in the past where annoying emails end up in the spam folder. Can you tell us the date and time of the email, and we will have our IT people check for it? It was sent yesterday at 11.03 a.m. Okay. I uh, again, I apologize that you didn't hear back from me. I assure you would have had. I received that email. I have not. None of us yes. I, I believe all of us would have probably responded to you. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mm H.D. -hmm. Bernard. Good evening. Please state your name and address for the record. H.D. Uh, Bernard, 16 Confederate Way, St. Charles, Missouri. Uh, Tom and I go way back, uh, over 50 years. Uh, I've known him through thick and through thin, through hard times and bad times. I've never seen him really go out of his way to ever hurt anybody or attempt to hurt anybody. He's always got everyone else's thoughts in mind as he tries to get things accomplished. Uh, 
you know, I've helped him when he first went, uh, got on the ballot to be a councilman, when he first got on the council to be mayor, uh, ballot to be, become mayor, uh, at the polls, whatever, you know. I'm with him no matter what. Nobody's, nobody's perfect. And that's all I have to say. All right, thank you. Kathy McGinnis. Hi, good evening. Please state your name and address for the record. Uh, my name's Kathy McGinnis. I live at 1690 Queens Drive in Florissant. Um, this is on a lighter note. You may have to pull that mic down a little bit. Thank you. Okay, like that? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Um, my name's Kathy McGinnis. Um, I'm a member of the North County uh, Rockers. And on behalf of Andrew Harris and myself, I want to thank you, Mayor, for all our rock gardens. They are fabulous. They are fabulous. And in our group, we find rocks, we pick up rocks, we take rocks, we rehide them, we leave them. It is now your rock to keep, hide. We share happiness, we share joy in your day. That, mean, that rock means something to everyone. The one who made it, the one who finds it, the one who gives it away. Hide, repeat, keep. Um, we are 3,000 gro growing, and um, our gardens give us a place to share. We share our rocks. We leave more than we take. We take those rocks. We spread them all over Florissant. We are spreading joy. We are spreading happiness. And I want to thank you, Mayor, because this world needs a lot more joy, a lot more friendship. Okay, that's it. Thank you. And I want to present this to you. Thank you. You want to hand it to our city attorney? Thank you. Bernice Foley. Good evening, Can, how are you? Mayor Snyder and our very illustrious Ms. Foley, can you, Ms. Foley, could you please state your name and address for us? My address? Please. Bernice Foley, 3475 Stonehaven Drive, Florissant, Missouri, 63033. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I just want to, you know, I want to tell you, I'm up here because I really am really proud of living in Florissant. We have gone through, I have seen many a mayor from uh, O. Koch, uh, O'Neill, Egan, uh, Clark, and everything, and, and, and of course our illustrious Mayor Laurie. And, you know what? Mr. Snyder has absolutely filled the shoes that this Mr. Lowry thought he would, and he did. He has livened up the city. He's very good to the elderly. He, he just concentrates on helping the senior citizens, and he's, he's very considerate of children. And I am so happy to live out here because I'm now one year older in dirt and two years older in water, and I wanted to be up here to make my thanks to all those wonderful mayors, especially to you, Mayor Snyder, what a wonderful job you are doing. And I thank you for letting me speak. Thank you. Rance Thomas. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Rance Thomas. I'm president of North County Church and Race Herman Justice. We have a number of churches throughout the city of Florissant. I'm here to speak in support of Mayor Tom Snyder, whom I've known for many years, even before he became mayor of the city of Florissant. I work with him now in a number of organizations and on various projects throughout the city. I cannot imagine him doing anything that's not in the best interest of the city of Florissant or North County or the justice system. Everything is done in my relationship with him and what I've heard about him have been in the best interest of Florissant and North County generally. God. 
Sorry about that. The cost of the integrity and commitment to Florissant and North County, we've invited him on many occasions to participate with us in our events. He's done so willingly and done a great job. He's always managed to find a way to say some good things about the city of Florissant and North County, which I really appreciate because I'm really very supportive of North County and the city of Florissant as well. In fact, he is one of the most dedicated individuals I've known in maintaining proper decorum. There's been a, been a great misunderstanding, a misinterpretation of some of the things that have been said here recently. I'm really, un, just really dissatisfied with what I've heard about him recently. I'm, I'm sure there's a misunderstanding. I trust him without hesitation, intended to serve the city of Florissant and North County generally. Mayor Snyder, we look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. David Bosher. Good evening. My name is David Boer. I live at 1870 Flamingo in Florissant 63031. Uh, I've lived in Florissant for 38 years, and it, it's a great city. I grew up with Tom Schneider. I met him when I was eight years old, and I'm 71 now, so that's pretty good. <laughs> anyway, I can't say enough good things about Tom. Honorable man, good family man. I know his mother real well. Uh, Tom served in Vietnam during, as a CB. My brother and I served in the Navy on an aircraft carrier. Tom's father was in uh, Pearl Harbor in the Navy. My father was also in the Navy. So there was a whole chunk of us that were just Navy guys that grew up. Uh, all I can say is, Tom, thank you for your service as mayor and your service in the military, and keep going. Thank you, and thank you for your service. Joyce Chancy. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Joyce Chancy. I live at 445 Myrtle Drive in Florissant. And as many of them have said before me, that Florissan is a great city. I, we've lived here for almost 43 years. And I'm on the board of Old Town Partners, and I am an Old Town Partner member. But I'm just a little disappointed in, in the mayor at this point. Thank you. Thank you. Mark Bauman. Good evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mark Bellman, 740 Lindsay Lane. I, hate, I share something with each and every one of you. I, too, am, an, I am a politician. And we throw ourselves to the community, and we sometimes get down in the dirt. And we do fight pretty hard to get to where we're at. And, and, and I get that. But so many of the people in the community, our constituents, they don't have a clue as to what politics actually is. They don't have a clue as what goes on behind the scenes. Now, I've lost my elections, but I've won a lot of elections. And one of the things that I've always tried to do is regardless if I win or lose, and most of us as politicians, when we win, we don't try to find out why we won. We're just happy that we won, but if you lose, you go out and you try to find out why you lost. So in my past elections that I've lost, I've all go, always gone back out and tried to interview different people, businesses, especially the businesses, who would call me and say, Mark, your sign has to be gone. And I would agree and I would say, yes, I'll do that. But then after the election was over and I lost and everything quieted down, I went back and said, now let's talk. And so I spoke with quite a few people. I spoke with dentists in town, restaurants, gas station owners, flower shop owners, chief of police, chiefs, 
two. School district superintendent, hospital president, a bakery in town, a jeweler in town. And then there's those private citizens who have to deal with retaliation, persuasion, and intimidation and arm twisting. So what I did was, is I put a report together, not knowing what I was gonna do with all of my interviews, time, dated, who said what. And I've held on to that report. I appreciate the council's efforts in what they've tried to do. Well, I'll tell you what I've done. I have sent a letter to the state attorney general with my report, naming names, phone numbers, and contact information of every one of these people I just listed, plus some, to do a thorough investigation. I've also got a hold of the United States Attorney General, who then forwarded me to the FBI. And so I've made a claim with the FBI to do a thorough investigation. I name names. And if any of these businesses are watching, they all knew what I was doing because they all ask after the interview, why are you collecting this information, Mark? And I said, because I want to know and I want to learn from it. Mr. Bellman. Time's up. My final words, Mr. Mayor, I think you need to retire. Thank, Thank you. you. John Engelmeyer. Good evening. John Engelmeyer, 1281 Graham Road. I'm here tonight to speak on this situation that has been addressed by several other citizens. I do believe the mayor, Thomas P. Schneider, ought to resign immediately, and I understand the charter. Several months and frequently I have talked about the charter being reviewed and a review commission, and nothing has been done. Now we're at the crossroads and still nothing's been done. I checked the state statutes as well, and as the Attorney General, I sent a letter to them and the Missouri Ethics Commission. I think what happened was appalling. I don't care about the story. All I know is what I read from Tony Messenger. It is sad to say, and it's deplorable to have an administration or my employees of this city to be intimidated and bullied by an individual, and no matter what good that he may have done, this action was deplorable. Richard Nixon was a great president, but also he had baggage. So did uh, Lyndon Johnson and John Kennedy. John Kennedy stands as a hero, and yet things that he did behind the scenes was uncalled for. And we're, again, we're at the crossroads, and I asked Mr. Hessel several months ago who administers the charter and I got little response. I, I don't know whether it's the mayor that administers the, the, the charter or the city council, but we're at that, that situation now. We don't know what to do. I appreciate the council taking the step forward and your announcement, Mrs. Pagano, this evening when opening up the meeting. I believe Time Snyder ought to be resigning and immediately removed from office and get this thing over with. And again, if any lawsuits come out of this, I don't expect the city of Florissant to pay for it. I expect it to come out of the, Mr. Schneider's personal account for his actions, which is, again, deplorable and unacceptable in today's world. Bulliness does not and should not exist at City Hall. Thank you. Shannon Duffy. She's gone. Oh. Shannon Duffy. Jeannie Thornburg. Good evening. Yeah, you can take the mic out for her. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Hello, Mayor and Council people. Um, my name is Reverend Jeannie Thornburg. I live at 1120 Malampi. Uh, this man has been great. Uh, I've seen what all he did with uh, when Ferguson had the riots, he you guys he got you guys to call in extra police patrol and keep our city safe. 
Um, I literally walked the riots over there. I was trying, I feed the homeless, and I was trying to get them to help out. And they were very violent, more than what the news crews had ever said. There's a lot of people that are scared to death. But we're safe up here. We were taken very good care of, and I really want to appreciate that. Um, also, he, I've understood that, you know, from him that you guys have done team, and I really appreciate that. It's been a wonderful thing that you all are feeding people that are low income and also has, could possibly be almost at the verge of being homeless. So I enjoy your fairs you have here. I mean, they've been very good. Though, of course, the one at the uh, Civic Center, I wish would be added an extra day on it. But other than that, it's been great. So, uh, Mayor, I hope you stay in. It's been a wonderful time. Thank you, people. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, I don't think she's going to be able to grab it. Oh, there you go. The next item on the agenda is communications, of which there are none. And we'll move on to public hearings. We have public hearing number 1707-024. Notice is hereby given that the City Council of the City of Florissant will hold a public hearing on the proposed budget for the City of Florissant, including the General Revenue Fund, Capital Improvement Fund, Park Improvement Fund, Street Fund, Sewer Lateral Fund, Property Revitalization Fund, and Court Building Fund for the fiscal year beginning December 1, 2017 in the Council Chambers at 955 Rue Saint-Francois on Monday, October 9, 2017 at 7.30 p.m. All interested persons are invited to attend the public hearing and may, be, may present their views concerning the proposed budget. Anyone with special needs should contact the City Clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling 839-7630 or TDD 839-5142. Good evening, Mr. McDaniel. Good evening. My name is Randy McDaniel, Director of Finance for the City of Florissant. Uh, the proposed budget was presented by the Mayor to the City Council at the Council meeting on September 25th. Uh, it was subsequently amended and a revised copy given to the Council on September 28th. Uh, that copy has been posted on the city, city website for review. That's pretty much all I have tonight. Mr. Lee. Thank you. Um, you can stand if you want to. I'm not really, I'm just going to make a statement on the public hearing. But uh, um, the city of Florissant has a large and somewhat complex budget. All of us have budgets in our own families, and um, we know that we have to anticipate income as well as expenses. <coughs> we know that there are always unforeseen things that pop up, and hopefully we can rely on savings to cover those unforeseen things. We also have to anticipate large purchases like a car and a house where we may borrow money and pay for it over time. Same way with the city of Florissant. But we all have to live within our budget. Last year during the budget discussions, the finance director gave us a very good presentation on the long-term budget issues we are facing. The city council came to the realization that we're in trouble. A long-term outlook was not good. We scheduled several budget work sessions for the year to address the inevitable problems we we're facing. At one of the meetings, Councilman Egan asked, how long can we go without making changes? The finance director said, not long. It was my hope that when we received the budget, we'd be able to address the expenditures side of the budget. How could a city of our size how could a city of our size make cuts in spending that would least impact the services to our residents? The Director of Finance estimated the 2017 general fund revenue would be less than the actual revenue we received in 2016. He's hoping that this will increase, increase for 2018. But the proposed budget for 2018 has general fund expenditures that will exceed revenue by $2.1 million, $2 million. The proposed budget actually increases spending by over $1.1 million for 2018. The proposed budget also includes forecasting of revenue and expenditures for the year 2019 through 2022. Based on the 
projections of our finance director, the city of Florissant will be more than $7.2 million short of revenue compared to projected expenditures for those four years. And this is if we cut spending by $1.24 million for 2019 and hold spending below that level for the years 2019 through 2022. Keep in mind that the proposed budget for 2018 increases spending by $1.1 million. In past years, the city of Florissant was able to grow and prosper on sales tax revenues. In fact, the city eliminated the small personal property and real estate taxes we collected, but things have changed. We've attempted to balance the budget not by reducing spending, but by asking for more revenue. Number one, our utility tax rate has been raised not once but twice from 3% to 5 to 7%. That, is, that now generates $5.5 million. $3.4 million of that is new revenue. We asked our residents to double the park improvement sales tax. Now at $3.5 million, that added $1.75 million in new revenue. We asked voters to approve a sales tax on streets, $1.5 million in new revenue. We asked voters to approve Proposition A and R for fee increases also new revenue. And this year, voters approved Proposition P sales tax for police and public safety, 2.6 million in new revenue. What that means is we've had over 9.25 million in new revenue. How much longer can we try to balance our budget without reducing spending? I believe that one of the most valuable assets in the city of Florida are our dedicated employees. We pay 100% of the medical insurance costs for these employees, which amounts to 8,683 a year per employee. We also cover 25% of dependent coverage, which is an additional 2,153 a year. And we've been told in the budget to expect a 5% increase in these premiums. <coughs> Last year, the finance director told us that salaries and benefits now exceeded 80% of the general fund. This year's proposed budget will raise that to over 87%. And in the budget message, he points out that this does not include salaries and benefits paid from the Park Improvement Fund. If those were added, then 93.5% of general fund would be spent on salaries and benefits. I appreciate your patience, but here are some of my major concerns on the proposed budget. When the budget was presented two weeks ago, we were told that funds raised from Proposition P would be commingled in general fund with no transparency or accountability for those funds, and I'm quoting because it was not required. There's a bill on tonight's agenda that when passed will require accountability for these funds. As Mr. McDaniel pointed out, after the council raised objections about the lack of accountability for Prop P funds, we did receive an amended budget. But after reviewing the breakdown of how Prop P's funds were proposed to be spent, I have questions and concerns. It appears that the pr proposal is to take money that is already budgeted for the police and have been paid from the general fund and use those funds to pay uh, out of Proposition P funds next year. Those include spending 550000 for insurance, 125,000 for legal expenses, 75,000 for telephone services, 33,000 for residency incentive, and other things that were already being paid for by the city out of general fund. I do not think the voters intended this when they approved Proposition P. Number three, the proposed budget includes large pay increases for a select few positions. One proposed position will increase by $19,167 a year in salary alone, plus additional benefits. Number four, the city charter establishes a Department of Health. The proposed budget looks like it eliminates the Department of Health and moves the employees to the police department. I don't personally know that that's a proper thing to do. Number five, the city borrowed funds through bonding to pay for the renovation of the new Justice Center. But we recently learned that there were unforeseen problems with that project that will add hundreds of thousands of dollars to the current budget. 
This will surely require additional funding to complete the project. Number six, we continue to use other special sales tax funds to pay for things that may appropriately be, should be coming from the general fund. For example, and I ask everybody out here tonight, what would you consider to be a capital improvement? Is it paying a bill for the street lights? Is it grass cutting? Is it paying for salt and chemicals for snow removal? Is it for furnishing, furnishings for the public works office remodel? Are those considered capital improvements? But they're being funded out of the capital improvement fund. And finally, I'm concerned about the fact that the proposed budget does not reduce spending. In fact, it increases it. Again, thank you for allowing me to voice my opinions during this public hearing. The city charter states the mayor shall submit a budget. It states that tonight we're having the public hearing on the budget. Now the city council has to go to work. So I challenge my fellow council members to take a long, hard look at the proposed budget. And I hope we can work together on this budget for the good of the city and not just for the next year, but also for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak on this? John Inglemeyer, 1281 Graham Road. On the budget and public hearing is like putting the cart before the horse. After the work sessions, you massage this budget, then you come up with a final number, and then it's given three readings to pass as an ordinance accepting it. So what I've said before, in many years, I've asked for various things to be done to this budget. Once again, I was gonna bring a roll of toilet paper because what I have here is just what it is, a roll of toilet paper. I do not believe it's correct. I think it's devious, deceptive, and dishonest. What's the Missouri legislator? Tim Green, it's nothing else but a political payoff. If you want to find something out about the Missouri legislator, you go to your municipal league, that's what you pay for the dues. The dues in your me and your pamphlets and your bulletins that come out tells you exactly what the city is expecting for you. And that's on the state level. I, on my state level, my state rep, not necessarily in the city of Florissant, stays in touch with me with a newsletter, which I have forwarded to you, or several council members, just for reading. Public relations consultant, $12,000. Again, a public relations officer should be the citizens here talking about how good Florissant is and inviting people to come back to Florissant. The word professional fees has always been a challenge to me. I've always asked for a definition. I wrote to the state auditor last week to get an opinion and a finding of fact on what is professional fees and what they encompass. What is professional fees? As I spoke at the last council meeting, the $900,000 judgment, I wanted a separate line item, but it was thrown into professional fees. Hidden, buried, why not be a line item? because you, the elected officials here, decided that was the appropriate spot, and I strongly disagree on that. As I go through the budget, and on page 22, dues, travels, and training, prosecuting attorney assistant, uh, association dues and conferences from 2000 to zero. I did not think that was appropriate. I like conferences for my for my officials to understand what is going on with the future and what's happening under uh, Senate Bill 5. And again, professional services come down and it says shared service uh, license. We have the uh, IT specialist that's gonna be working between the city and the police department. I do not agree with the health department to be integrated with the police department. I think the police officers do a good job for servicing this community underneath protective services. The health department, even though that it is an important factor of the city, I don't think it ought to be integrated with the police department for other various reasons. And on page 
looks like 24. The, um, the health department, the elimination of all the salaries that moved over to the police department um, is incorrect in my opinion. There's no breakdown of individual salaries. I think that was alluded to by Mr. Lee. What is the breakdown? What's the, what's the raises? For some individuals, I think they deserve more than enough to help defray the costs and their endurances working at City Hall. Turning into another page. I do not have a table here to work from, so I'm working off the podium. Bank fees, $6,800 on page 44. Um, I have done this before with negotiating bank fees. And again, I don't know what bank we're working with, but that's negotiable. Depends upon how much money you go through the account and why we're paying $6,800, I have no clue. That to me was a shock there. Golf course equipment. I have met and I've sat in the meetings with the golf course committee. They've done a wonderful job and they're coming down in terms of actual costs and focusing on that and, and staying strong. I think the due diligence and staying with it and focusing on that is significant. On the budget, underneath professional services again, on page 41, it goes from 98,000 to 550,000 and the proposed budget to $100,750. Again, full-time services on that part-time people was 139,142. I don't know what that is exactly for, but that's for the golf course, page 41. Underneath, um, there was a legal bill on legal litigation that it dropped significantly, and I don't know why it dropped significantly. Um, I don't think Mr. Hessel is necessarily going to take a, a cut in pay, but it dropped tremendously. I can't find it right now. The revenue side was just a shock to me in terms of all the revenue. We got the $2.9, $2.4 million added underneath Proposition P into the city budget, and yet <laughs> I don't know where it is. I, I, is it buried within the police department? I saw what the police department is trying to buy and purchase for that money, but again, we're sitting with general fund revenue that's down and going down fast. On this particular issue, contract employees. As I said before, um, I spoke at many of these budget sessions, and rather than take your time, I'm going to yield to the council at their work sessions, and with the question of is giving the public time to speak. Because at this time I asked and I sent an email to the city clerk requesting the department heads be here to respond and answer the questions of their budget in their particular department. And the only person I see is Randy McDaniel, and that's the director of finance. So it's very, very interesting that we, we can't talk to our own uh, department heads to find out what they've allocated and, and why and, and just give some different insight. So. Anyway, I'll stop at that point. I know the budget session will be this Saturday, October 14th, and I'll be there. Thank you. The department heads will be there also. I assume that, but not here for the public hearing. This is when the time the public has time to talk, but we can't talk to our own city department heads. Come on. Thank you. Good evening again. Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho Lane, Florissant, Missouri, 63031. I don't really have any specific questions about the budget because we don't have enough time. But I have noticed over the years, and I brought it to the attention of the finance, the finance director, that trying to read the budget, just a layperson, 
is very difficult. You go from one section, you got to go to another section, and we've often, we are always, I say often, but we're always, uh, compared with Chesterfield, Missouri. And Chesterfield, Missouri has a much better uh, budget layout. It's easier to follow, easier to understand. It's got pie charts where you can look at the pie charts. I mean, it's a physical thing. You're not having to try to decipher what the meanings are. But uh, I would like to see that type of budget layout in the future, hopefully next year, maybe, uh, because it's very, very difficult. I've been trying to follow the budget here. I asked, this has been about four year, three or four years ago, I asked Mr. McDaniel about uh, possibly looking into that, and he said it is not gonna change. And uh, I don't know if he's still in the room or not, but I am not lying. Now, that is, that, this reminds me of the things, this is the way things have been going on, for, this is the way we did things 50 years ago. I hear that all the time. You know, and I'd like to thank Mr. Lee. He's fantastic. His presentation this evening was fantastic. It, it hit a lot of things that I wanted to touch on. And I appreciate having Mr. Lee on the council, even though he's not my councilman. He has, he has his thumb on, his finger on the pulse of the city. And I want to thank you, Mr. Lee. Uh, do you hear me? Okay. Anyway, uh, I just, he looked like he was playing solitaire like I was back there, but anyway. Uh, okay, but I really appreciate everything that uh, I'd like to see more, uh, you know, clarity on the budget so, so when a regular person looks at it that isn't a finance director or an accountant or an attorney, they can look at this and say, ah, I see where the money's been spent. And this is uh, basically, all I have to say, but I think that uh, I want to thank you again, Mr. Lee, and you did a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Seeing no further comment, <clears throat> Councilman Lee moves to close this public hearing, seconded by Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This motion is carried and the public hearing is closed. Next is public hearing number 1707-025. In accordance with Section 405, 310 of the Floors and Zoning Code, <clears throat> a public hearing will be held by the City Council of Florissant, Missouri, in the Council Chambers at 5, 955 Rue St. Francois on Monday, October 9, 2017, at 7.30 p.m. on the following proposition. To authorize a special use permit to Melamphy Gardens Acquisitions, LLC, DBA, Spot House Restaurant, and Bar to allow for the operation of a restaurant and bar in a B3 zoning district for the property located at 2 and 3 Melamphy Gardens Shopping Center. Citizens will have an opportunity to be heard. Anyone with special needs should contact the city clerk at least five days before said public hearing by calling 839-7630 or TDD 839-5142. Thank you. Is the petitioner present? No. Nope. <coughs> Mr. Ham. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Need my address? Pardon me? I need my address. Yes, please. Uh, it's 1590 Ashby Roads, 63132. All right, thank and you. And I'm representing the owners. I'm the construction manager of the job. All right. Are you going to need the overhead protector? Uh, I think you guys got all documents. I can. If you want to put it up for the sure, audience, that would be great, too. Um, if you want to flip the switch on the top there. Top, on the flat part of the screen. There you go. Thank you. Um, are you guys looking more of the floor plan or the site plan? What would you like? Look at that. Look at what you sh you're going to show us <laughs> <laughs> and talk about. So if you want to do the floor plan first, we'll yes, do that sorry. right. So, yeah. Turn it facing you, and then it will be right. <laughs> yeah. Face you. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, so I'm representing the uh, property owner and the tenants moving in there. We're looking to construct a, roughly about a 4,000 square foot restaurant inside the facility with a small bar attached to it. Will you hold that a little bit closer sure, to no you? Sure, Thank you. Yeah, you can take it, yeah, you can take it out good. too if no, that's it's better. Okay. 
Okay. Anyways, um, basically he has a restaurant now up in Grafton, Illinois, he's about six years and he's looking to expand. So he's moving into Florissant. It's mostly American food. His business hour is gonna be from 10.30 um, in the morning to 11 o'clock at night for a restaurant. And then the bar side itself, I think it's gonna be from 11 to 1.30 in the morning. So as you can see on, I guess, the left side is going to be mostly the restaurant, which is the majority of his business. And the right side would be a small bar. I was waiting for that. Mr. Jones? Yeah, the first thing I'd like to say is we've been uh, asking this of uh, many of our businesses now that we get a trash can right outside that door where you come in and out. So anybody coming in with a beer bottle or anything or any trash or coming out of the restaurant, uh, that that is taken care of. It kind of keeps our city up and uh, our parking lots and everything else. That makes perfectly good sense and I will bring that to the building owner. Great. Mr. Caputo. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, will there be um, music at the bar, like bands playing or just DJ? There's none set for that, no. And we don't have it laid out for any musical live bands so in there. So it's just a regular, regular old saloon? Yes, it's actually more, it's probably to support the bar side for people that want drinks for the dinner time. But uh, just at the off hours, there will have, as you can tell, the proportion wise, it's not a very large facility for a bar. So there won't be that much venue going on. Thank you. Mr. Lee? Yeah, thank you. Um, this is gonna be proposed in my ward and I, I, I hadn't heard anything from Melanfi acquisitions or the, or the petitioner. All I had was the planning and zoning minutes. So I've been playing catch up since getting this, this weekend, but uh, you've answered some of the questions. Um, are you planning to be open seven days a week? That is correct. Can you're not going to have have music? It's not our intentions. Okay, that's all I have at this time. Mr. Childre. Thank you, Madam President. My question was answered. Mr. Parson. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Uh, Mr. Ham, you mentioned earlier that uh, there is another location in Illinois. Is that what you said, or? Well, he owns another restaurant up in Grafton, Illinois, up on the river. He's had that for about six years now. Okay, but it's a different type of restaurant than what this it, one is being proposed. At. It's the same type of food. He's bringing uh -huh. that same kind of menu that's up there in Grafton, Illinois, He's down here to Florissant. Okay, is there a bar also at that restaurant? I'm trying to see what type of activities that may happen here at the Florissant location and if it's going to be similar to the one in Illinois. Sure, that's a, that's a perfect good question. Um, Yes, it is structured with a restaurant with the support of a bar for just actually the drinks into the restaurant itself to spill over. But the bar is not the majority of his business. His thing is the uh, food. Okay, so food is the primary, um, I guess, uh, thing for them. Not that is the correct. Okay. If you look at the square footage, yes, it's going to offset, yes. Okay, I understand. Thank you. Mr. Regan. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, two and three Melampi Gardens, which end of the plaza is that at? So that is going to be on, I want to say, the east side of the shopping center. So that would be a Dollar General store mm -hmm. of vacant spaces, which was that fitness center. So then it would be three bays down from there. That's all I have. Mr. Jones? Can we ask the name of the business up there in Illinois? Or, uh... Yes, the restaurant's going to be called, um, I'm sorry, I had that here, uh, Spot House. Okay, it's it, called Spot House. Is, is that what it's called up in Illinois? Oh, I'm too? sorry, no, it's called Cedar Hill. Cedar Hill? Yes. Okay, we're gonna have a grease pit in the back? Well, by code, we're gonna have to put a, a, a grease interceptor on, behind the sinks to receive all the grease, but there probably would be for the sinks, so yes, there would probably be a, a grease trap, or not a grease trap, a container to be stored. Okay, great, thanks. Thank you. Before we close this public hearing, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Seeing none, Councilman. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Councilman Lee. Moves to 
close this public hearing. Seconded by Mr. Egan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carried and the public hearing is now closed. <coughs> the next item on the agenda is old business. The first item under old business is second readings. We have bill number 9310. Councilman Egan moves for a second reading. Seconded by Mr. Jones. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Ordinance to rezone for Darren Tucker, the property located at 22 Flower Ridge Lane from R4 single family dwelling district to R6 multiple family dwelling district to allow for the construction of a duplex. Councilman Egan moves for a third reading, seconded by Mr. Lee. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Ordinance to rezone for Darren Tucker, the property located at 22 Flower, Lane, Flower Ridge Lane from R4 single family dwelling district to R6 multiple family dwelling district to allow for the construction of a duplex. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Seeing none, clerk, please pull the council for the final vote. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Lee? Yes. Bill number 9310 passes and becomes ordinance number 8351. The next item on the agenda is new business. The first item under new business is board appointments. Oh, good. Mayor? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I wish to reappoint the following individuals to the Senior Commission. Uh, Ruth Azar from Ward 5, Florence Klinger from Ward 5, and Corrine uh, Desiznik from Ward 4. Uh, Mr. Caputi, can you pronounce that name? She got me. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor, okay. Thank you. Councilman Childreth moves to approve the mayor's appointment, seconded by Mr. Caputa. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The appointments are made. The next item on the agenda is request. We have a request for a full package liquor license for Save a Lot located at 468 North Lindbergh. Councilman. I will in a minute. Councilman Anki moves to approve a full package liquor license. Seconded by Mr. Parson. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, roll, uh, roll call. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shoot. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Thank you. Motion carried, carried and the license is approved. Can, we have a request for a package liquor license for A Mart and package liquor located at 2875 Patterson Road. Councilman Caputo. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, today, this afternoon, I received a call from the um, requester, Mr. Bagot. Um, yeah, when you called me this afternoon, this is the first time you yes, sir. came in contact you know, yeah. try to get a hold of me and was, um, cause this, when I seen this on the agenda, I, I was kind of surprised yes. because, um, I wasn't informed of what was going in, in that building there. Cause as of right now, it's still the providing insurance company building, correct? No, there's no, they're not no more there or there. I know they're not there, but they're still, I mean, all your, their signs and everything are still there, correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, when were you um, going to start working on that building to get that ready for a, a convenience store? And Okay, so when it's, I get the permission from you guys or approve something, so we get the license, then I can start doing some things on that. Because I have a, I have a few questions on this, and um, I am going to make a motion that we postpone this, so I can get some more information on um, how this is set up because of where it's where it is. It's close to another package liquor store. The gas station sells liquor there. 
Uh, there's a bar close to it within a couple hundred feet of each other. Mm -hmm. So I still have some questions that I, I need to get some answers on. So I will be postponing this until okay. our hopefully our next our next council meeting. Okay, I got the, some uh, when we, we uh, by the building before everything's uh, we call from the city people over there and they check out everything and they saying okay, it's nothing is wrong to get the license. So that's why you want the building over there on that. So if you want, I get you some. Email if you'd like to give them to our attorney. So like, it's like before we try to buy the building, we can uh, contact the city peoples, and they're saying uh, nothing is wrong to get license, so that's why we bought the building over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Bacat, um, still, I would still like to, I'm going to postpone this until the next meeting so we can, no we can get some more, more, um, some of my questions answered. No problem, sir. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Councilman Egan moves to postpone. Seconded by Mr. Hankey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is postponed to October 23rd. Thank you. I didn't know the date. <laughs> Next, we'll move to resolutions. We have resolution number 999. A resolution urging the St. Louis County Council and the St. Louis Board of Aldermen to oppose any and all legislation authorizing the state vote, statewide vote regarding or mandating a change in the government structure of St. Louis City and St. Louis County and the municipal, municipalities therein. Councilman Childress moves for a second. Reading second by Mr. Egan. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? A resolution urging St. Louis County Council and the St. Louis Board of Aldermen to oppose any and all legislation authorizing a statewide vote regarding or mandating a change in the government structure of St. Louis City and St. Louis County and the municipalities therein. Councilman Childress moves for a third. Reading second by, by myself. Roll call, please. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Mm -hmm. Lee? Yes. A resolution urging St. Louis County Council and St. Louis Board of Aldermen to oppose any and all legislation authorizing a statewide vote regarding a man or mandating a change in the government structure of St. Louis City and St. Louis County and the municipalities therein. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? No. Oh, okay. But before I do it, while he's walking up, Mr. Caputa, I'm sorry, I didn't see That's all right. Anybody Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, this resolution is, um, I don't know if a lot of people is in, informed about Better Together. See, this, this organization, Better Together, wants, actually, what they're trying to do is have the city and county merge as one. So we all know what's going on with the city of how everything's going on. Me personally, I'm just one vote. I am not in favor of the county and our municipalities that we have in the county to merge with the city of St. Louis. I think the city of St. Louis should merge with the county, if anything, not us merging with them. So. I am all for this resolution. I think it's um, great. It's a unanimous vote, I presume, on this, which is good. It shows, it shows the St. Louis City and us better together that our municipalities in St. Louis County are sticking together on this, and we're not going to back down from it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Engelmeyer. John Engelmeyer, 1281 Gray Road. Thank you for passing your resolution. It makes good sense, Mr. Makuda. I've, I've listened to several speeches, presentations on this, and you're correct. I would like to see the city come into the county, 
not us go to the city. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Lee. Yeah, the other thing I want to add is, is that if you read the resolution and talking at the uh, members of the Municipal League, I, I personally am going to voice my opinion that the state of Missouri statewide should not be voting at all on what we do at a municipal level. It's something that needs to be done at the municipal level. If there is going to be anything happen, it's going to take the vote of the city and the county um, in order to, to do any kind of a merger or a combination or whatever the case may be. And I, I do not want the outstate, the rest of the state of Missouri voting on what's going to happen to us, our municipalities. Thank you. Mr. Childreth. Thank you, Madam President. I'd just like, like to thank the council for their unanimous support when I made the calls the sponsor of this resolution. And I also thank the mayor for his uh, leadership on this because I know he's been out front with it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. O'Donnell. Yes, Kevin O'Donnell, 512 Rancho, Florissant, 6301. Uh, I commend Mr. Mr. Caputa, Mr. Lee, for speaking out about this. I am against this extensively, especially what's been happening in St. Louis the last month. We do not need the same trouble they have in St. Louis that they have. We don't want the same thing in St. Louis and Florissant that we have in St. Louis right now. And I think our tax dollars and our spending and stuff would be better off taking care of ourselves than to be spreading it across St. Louis County and St. Louis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor? Thank you, Madam President. This uh, idea, which was preposterous not that long ago, actually has got some traction and support in the state Senate and in the state legislature. Uh, very unfortunate. Fortunately, uh, Kansas City Mayor Sly James uh, has made the coalition of mayors throughout the state a much stronger group. We've been moved, meeting every other month, uh, and this is one of the major topics on our agenda every time. And uh, they know that if it happens to us, it could happen to them next. Uh, it could be Kansas City area next, or it could be the Springfield area after that. Uh, and we're already very, uh, concerned about the state legislature trying to take away local control. We actually uh, had buttons made. Uh, I don't know if I have one with me. I, don't, I think I had it in a jacket I had on yesterday. But we had these buttons made at the M Missouri Municipal League about I love local control. And uh, it is a concerted effort uh, by the Municipal League and all the mayors and, and council members throughout the state to uh, counteract an effort by an outfit that was across the street from here yesterday at the uh, fall festival, an outfit called Better Together. Uh, it's an outfit that was created by a billionaire who happens to love chess, and he uh, wants the state legislature to put a measure on for the whole state to vote on, uh, and they want to eliminate Florissant as a city uh, and replace us as a neighborhood. And it just so happens that the Post-Dispatch reporter that attacked me also wants that as well. He wants Florissant just to be a neighborhood, he wants Kirkwood to be a neighborhood, he wants Overland to be a neighborhood, Manchester, you name it, whatever municipality is, they don't want us to exist anymore. They want to have one big unit government. And I am very proud to add that the council allowed me to join them in this resolution. I'm assuming it will be unanimous with the support of your mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Hearing no further comments, clerk, please call, call the council for the final vote. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Caputa? Yes. Childroth? Yes. Hankey? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. The resolution passes. Thank you. Bill number 9313. Request to issue an amendment to B-5 Ordinance Number 8105 to allow for a retail establishment, Dollar General, General, for the property located at 15275 New Halls Ferry Road. Councilman Caputa. Thank you, Madam President. Um, yes, I'll, also I will be postponing this bill. We, we have not had, I take this back, I'm sorry, we, we have received some more plans, a letter, 
this afternoon, late this afternoon, on this, um, on this establishment. We have no kind of new plan plans on it. And I'm gonna, Mr. Hessel, would this be required to go back to planning and zoning because of the whole, they're redoing the whole building of what we had before? That is a staff determination. It's not a legal determination. Um, candidly, my comment to the council as well as to the staff is that there's no legal obligation to send it back to planning and zoning. Um, if the council desires that it go back, we will do that. But I suggest to you that you have an applicant that is, it appears, is trying to comply with recommendations made by the Planning and Zoning Commission and strong suggested recommendations from the City Council. So I'm not sure what benefit there would be to send them back to Planning and Zoning, but that's just my perspective on it. Okay, thank you. Um, but are you moving to postpone? If not, I have, you, you should have made a motion to discuss. <laughs> I have our City Clerk here in this year. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to cut either one of you off, so. Um, <laughs> yes, I would, way, I would like to see. Just, the easier way is to just withdraw your motion. You've had first reading. It will naturally then go to the next council meeting without the need for a motion to discuss, then a motion to continue. Oh. You'll get to the same spot by simply withdrawing your motion. Okay, I, I withdraw my motion. <laughs> Thanks, but um, still, I would I would like to see some plans on this. Understood. Uh, so okay. hopefully we will we'll get some plans Wait. in the near future. And it, well, it's just threat. Oh, yeah, he yeah. doesn't. Yeah. Right. Unless you right. suspend the rules, he can make a motion to suspend the rules. All right, Mr. Children is making a motion to suspend the rules. I'll second that. So so. I did not see you out. I'm sorry. Come on up. And all in favor of suspending the rules? Uh, Aye. Aye. First of all, I apologize for. There you go. I apologize for our architect not getting this over here. If I would have known, I would have driven it or had somebody else bring them all over. It should have been done two weeks ago, and it wasn't. And I found out about three hours ago. So I'm embarrassed and not happy with, with uh, the people that we entrusted this work with. But uh, I will go over this. We have, is that good? We have met both uh, all the requirements of the planning and zoning and city council per the request. So we have gone to 100% brick. And there was no other items, there was no other objections, and we have met everything. And again, I apologize for the late. I have copies for everybody. And this is the only one colored, which is also embarrassing. Is that full plans for the building? No, full elevation plans per the request, yes. Now do you the still full plans were, were um, altered. It's the 7,500 square foot with full brick. Yes, I yes. know. But the plans have been altered, correct, to go down to a 7,500 square foot building. Correct? The last submittal was a 7,500 per the site plan. It was not changed on the site plan that I had from a 9,100. So the plans were 7,500. And it was showing, I, everybody knows, not 100% brick, and that was the only change made. Yes, because what we have in our packet, it's the, basically the same building that you had before, correct? That is correct. Only it's 85 by 85. That's correct, okay. yes. The now site like plan hasn't the, changed. So everything's the same except the size of the building and the masonry? The 100% brick masonry is correct, yes. That's the so only change. So nothing's going to change that's inside on our original No, plans. everything else has been agreed to per the, and we have met everybody else's requirements. Per your request last meeting and per uh, planning and zoning, yes. Correct. We have met all requirements. Okay. Mr. Jones? Yeah, it always makes us feel good when you come in with one big brat one solid brick, you know what I mean? 
Yes, I understand. Kind of a fetish we have here, Florida. I understand that. Yes. Mr. Hankey. Yeah, this this being our main concern, remember you got beat up a little bit last time about the brick, and I'm glad we stuck to our guns, so you're complying with the full brick building. That's what we asked for. Mr. Children. Good evening, sir. I appreciate you going to full brick also, and I will go I will be guided by Mr. Caputo on this one. I believe that we're just billed for the first time, right? Bill Reckon. Okay. And thank you for complying with that. I know you I know you wanna to, wanna to build that there and that in that piece of land, so I'm glad you guys uh, change your change your plans and that's good that you're doing it all brick. Because I mean that we do have that ordinance and glad you're complying with it. All right. Thank you. It's been read for the first time. Okay. Can, do I, should I take this yes. down? Or? Yeah. yeah. So it is going to be a red brick <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right. Bill number 9314. Ordinance to authorize a special use permit to Melanfi Gardens Acquisitions LLC DBA Spot House Restaurant and Bar to allow for the operation of a restaurant and bar for the property located at 2 and 3 Melanfi Gardens Shopping Center. Bill number 9315. Ordinance authorizing the repainting of masonry for Kabul B Center <coughs> Commercial Properties LLC located at 428 Houdershell. Bill number 9316. Ordinance amending Chapter 340 Miscellaneous Driving Rules by adding a new Section 340-105 Golf Cart Regulations. Bill number 9317. Ordinance establishing a separate fund to account for the revenue received from Proposition S and P and a separate fund to account for the revenue received from Propositions A and R combined. Councilman Jones moves for a second reading, seconded by Mr. Caputa. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. I yeah. and then we'll, okay. okay. Ordinance establishing a separate fund to account for the revenue received from Propositions S and P and a separate fund to account for the revenue received from Propositions A and R combined. Okay. I'm going to move. I got you. One second. All right. I'm going to move to amend this to put an effective date in as of December 1st for Mr. McDaniel. Is that okay? All right, so you want to um, move for a third reading? Please, for the amendment. Yeah, oh, yeah, amend don't let's amend it. <laughs> I will make a motion to amend it, seconded by Councilman Egan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So Councilman Jones is moving for a third reading. Seconded by Mr. Lee, roll call please. Oh, you do have a light. Go ahead. Oh, Mr. Lee. Yeah, I just want to note that uh, we did receive an email from the mayor this afternoon, and he has already started the motion forward and has asked the, the finance director to get that so we will have it before the end. And uh, he did similar with Proposition P, so um, I, I appreciate that. And this will memorialize it, and I think everybody's going to be on the same page with it. So thank you, Mayor. Good. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Good all Mayor? Yeah, in the spirit of uh, cooperation, mentioned by Mr. Lee, I will sign the uh, uh, ordinance uh, without delay. Thank you. Mr. Jones? Yeah, folks, we usually don't ask for three readings uh, very often, you guys, but uh, I think everybody up on the podium here agrees that this was the right thing to do. Uh, it shows a little bit of accountability uh, for the residents uh, and for us council people, too. Thanks.
Pardon me? All right. Roll call, please. <laughs> Roll call for third reading. Roll call okay. for third reading, yes. Gotcha. Jones? Yes. Egan? Yes. Gafuda? Yes. Shildroth? Yes. Hanky? Yes. Pagano? Yes. Parson? Yes. Siam? Yes. Lee? Yes. Okay. Ordinance establishing a separate fund to account for the revenue received from propositions S and P and a separate fund to account for the revenue received from propositions A and R combined. Before the final vote is taken, is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak on this? Mr. Caputa. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I have a question on Prop, Prop S. Isn't Prop S already on a separate fund? It was a resolution and not an ordinance. Okay, yeah. So. Yeah, so Prop S is actually on a, a separate account. Right, as a as a, it was on as a resolution, now it is an ordinance. Now is it, it is an ordinance. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Well, not yet. In a, in a, right. Right. When we take a vote, it will. <laughs> Mr. Lee, I don't know. At the rate this whole bill's going, it's got. Did you want to comment? Is that what you were going to comment? Yeah, I was going to basically say the same thing. Is is that. Uh, we actually, I think, did a joint resolution, and we and we are already getting it in that form. <coughs> this would memorialize it, and all of them would be maintained the same way from here on out. So we'll always have that. So, okay, ready to go for this? Thank you. All right. Hearing no further comments, clerk, please pull the council for the final vote. Jones. Yes. Egan. Yes. Caputa. Yes. Shildroth. Yes. Hanky. Yes. Pagano. Yes. Parson. Yes. Siam. Lee? Yes. Bill number 9317 passes and becomes ordinance number 8352. Let me get the red one, got a little bit left. <laughs> <laughs> the bill number 9318. Ordinance amending article, what is that, 17? <laughs> Residential rental real estate. The next item on the agenda is council announcements. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, first of all, I'd like to just talk about the Fall Festival, the 20th Annual Fall Festival. I, I think I probably say this every year, but I think this was probably the best one we've ever had, and, and I don't know how we count the attendance, but there were tens of thousands of people that attended. I want to specifically thank Karen Goodwin, Diana Weiniger, who have chaired this event for 10 years now. Um, and I also want to thank... <laughs> I also want to thank uh, Laura Click and Click Heating and Cooling, who sponsor the Chili Cook-Off and uh, announced, that, <laughs> announced that our the winner this year was Council President Pagano. <laughs> And, and we had to clarify that this, uh, the first runner-up or second place is actually Rachel Schneider. Um, <laughs> the, she, she informed us that the mayor, the mayor helped with the naming of the chilling, is that correct? But that was your chili that everybody voted for. So, um, and also I just heard today that uh, Click Heating and Cooling will be donating uh, the full $740 dollars that was raised at the event wow. will be donating it to Old Town Partners. So uh, thank them for their, their support yes. for this event as well. So. I also wanted to announce that uh, Wards 1, 3, and 4 will be having a joint ward meeting this Friday, October 11th, 7 o'clock at the... I'm sorry, did I say? Sorry. That's, I'm sorry. You're right. <laughs> We'll be having a joint ward meeting on Wednesday, October 11th at 7 o'clock at JFK. Uh, the mayor will not be able to join us, but he has made sure that we will have the department heads here that were requested and uh, look forward to everybody coming and, and uh, being able to uh, talk to the residents. So thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Jones. Yep, I'd like to start out with uh, 
team down the street is our food pantry, you guys. So please keep that in mind. There's always somebody hungry morning, noon, or night. So a few canned goods or a, a, you know, a handful of quarters, anything helps down there. So please keep that in mind. It's one street over. We're always looking for volunteers, too. Another thing I'd like to bring up is MSD. I'm having a lot of phone calls about them saying that they were supposed to get paid back for the pump systems. I do plan on meeting with the mayor and MSD this week and going to start hammering that out again. Uh, we had three meetings. They told us they was going to do it that way, and that's the way they're going to do it because we're not going to go back on the word that they said, especially when they said it at three separate meetings. So I look forward to reaching out to the CEO of MSD again and the mayor to try to get this uh, uh, fixed and make sure they do what they say they're, they was going to do, not go back on their word because some time has passed because well, that's not how I do things. Another thing I'd like to bring up, you guys, the MSD and uh, American Water is going to be out in full force uh, with the meters and different things in our neighborhoods. they all supposed to have badges from the utility outfit that they're working for. If they do not have badges, they are not with these companies. Please call your police department and ask them to be removed because we don't like these people running around our neighborhoods without a badge. Another thing I'd like to bring up is the soldiers' wish list, Christmas for our troops. Uh, we have drop-off points at the JFK Community Center, the Egan Center, Florissant City Hall, and the Florissant Police Station. Uh, this is from Mrs. Abbott. I seen her at the JFK the Center today, and she asked me if I would carry this forward. And uh, I do remember her bringing this up before, so. I'm doing what you requested I do. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Parson. Thank you, uh, Madam President. Um, although they're, they're already gone, I just want to thank um, Mr. Harvey Love, who's a teacher at McClure North, and his uh, business education class that attended um, our meeting this evening. Uh, it was a pleasure to, to see uh, young people involved and, and wanting to know about our city government. I had an opportunity to, to speak with their class um, about my profession as an attorney and uh, my uh, job here in, on the city council. They had great questions, um, very bright students, and uh, I think the future is looking bright for us, and I appreciate them uh, attending here today. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is um, uh, the floors in five. Make sure that you get to know your neighbors. <clears throat> Excuse me. Make sure you get to know your neighbors uh, across the street next to you. Uh, I think your community is safer if you know what's going on with Johnny next door or, or David across the street or and so on if, if we get to really know our neighbors. And lastly, uh, I just got to say uh, uh, the, Florissant, uh, the fall festival for Florissant was an excellent time yesterday. I, I may be a little bit bitter about losing a chili cook-off, but that, that, that's all right. I'll, I'll get over it. I just love to compete. So, um, But we had a great time, though. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Hankey? Yes. Uh, repeating what's already been said, but it's in my war, the fall, this fall festival, once again, was fabulous. And I think uh, I want to thank our city employees for the outstanding job they do. They make this look seamless, and Old Town Partners, well, countless hours of work that goes in it, they make it look easy, and it is anything but easy. And the, the city, our, our employees do a wonderful job in it. I want to thank them, and most of all, I want to thank our citizens. Our citizens, this is what this event's about. How can you get 30, 40, 50,000 people together with no problems? That's our community. To me, that's, that speaks volumes for the community that we live in, that we can all get together on a, on a, on a Sunday afternoon in October, and it turns into that. It's really nice. Uh, also, this Friday is food truck night down at the Knights of Columbus. Uh, and in conjunction with team, they always said bring, a, bring uh, some canned goods or some, some cash, whatever. So go down and enjoy the food trucks at the Knights of Columbus this Friday and bring some food to feed someone else that may be a little more needy than we are. <coughs> so thank you. Thank you. Mr. Children? Thank you, Madam President. I also, too, would like to thank the Fall Festival Committee for a terrific event. I'd like to congratulate Mrs. Pagano on winning the chili cook-off. Although I do lean to let everybody know she was under medication this weekend. So <laughs> I don't know if, what that says for, yeah. And I'd like to congratulate <laughs> Rachel Schneider also, replacing second. I'd like to thank the chief and his staff for a terrific time at the Florissant Police Welfare Association Golf Tournament. It was for a very worthy cause, and uh, we did pretty well. Yes. We Looking did. for the trophy. You oh. forgot it, right? Oh, okay. I forgot your trophy. It's Thank medication. You. There you go. 
And again, I'd like to remind everyone to please continue to exercise patience on Graham Road with the MSD project with one lane being closed and on Washington, that project with St. Louis County is coming to an end. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Egan. Thank you very much, Madam President. In late June 2017, a new community group was formed called NOCO Rocks. It's part of the Kindness Rocks movement sweeping the nation. The group has already grown over 3,000 individuals who paint and leave rocks in North St. Louis County and beyond for others to find and hope to brighten someone's day. The founders of the group also intended this as a platform to promote North County causes and to promote businesses operating in our area. The City of Florissant, the Florissant Parks Recreation Department and certain individuals like myself and Mr. Lee have uh, worked with, partnered with uh, NOCO Rocks to open up several gardens. I think we have three of them in, in Florissant right now. The J.J. Egan Center right out here at, at um, City Hall, uh, St. Bernard Park and at JFK, so we have four. Information on this group and what they're doing is on the web at North County NOCO Rocks on their Facebook page. So look them up and I know Mr. Harris is here today. He's worked very, very hard in opening these gardens and I think it's a pretty cool thing. So thank you, Andrew and all the group at NOCO Rocks. Uh, number two, uh, the race to Shrine is October 21st. It's a, a, a 5K race through Old Town Florissant. Steps off at 4 p.m. There is a fun run a front run walk for one, uh, one mile that steps up at 3.30. So if you're not ready up to run, but you want to walk, uh, you can still register at racetheshrine.org or racetheshrine.com. Lots of food, lots of uh, music, and as the mayor always says, we like to get together here in Florissant. There'll be a bunch of people getting together on a great fall evening. And we already talked about food truck nights. Oh, last one, Valley of Flowers Benefit is next Saturday, Sunday, October 15th at Hendel's, 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, it's still not too late to uh, sign up for this. It's $45 a person, and the proceeds go to benefit the Valley of Flowers Committee, which puts on our, our second uh, festival every year, which is Valley of Flowers. So if you want to uh, still get in, it's not too late. Uh, Wednesday is the deadline, 837-0033, 837-0033, or uh, call me and I'll get you in touch with my wife who's on the committee. Again, that's next <coughs> next Sunday, October 15th at Hendel's. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Caputo. Thank you, Madam President. A um, couple things I have here. If you're a firearm owner, make sure you secure your firearms. Don't leave them in your vehicles where they can get stolen. So make sure you um, keep your firearms secured. Be a responsible firearm owner. Uh, past um, week or week or two, we had a couple car thefts in the, in our ward, but the keys were left in the car, in the vehicle, in the ignition. Stupidity. Make sure you. Um, Take your keys out of your vehicle, lock them up, lock it and pocket the key. Remember the old saying, Ladias? Some of the younger people in here might not remember that, but the old saying was lock it and pocket the key. Um, like Mr. Lee said, Wednesday, we're having a ward meeting, ward one, four, and three, seven o'clock at the James Egan Center. Ho hopefully everybody can. JFK. JFK, I'm sorry. <laughs> at JFK Center, so so hope everybody can um, attend the ward meeting. Be very informative. Um, I skipped this last month. Um, I want to apologize to the Air Force veterans out there. They just had their birthday, September 18th. They were um, 70 years old. The Air Force was. So and um, October 13th which is Friday the 13th. Naturally, Friday the 13th is the Navy's birthday. I want to wish them a happy birthday to 242 years old. We do have a couple <laughs> Navy veterans on this, on this dais up here. I, don't get me going, please. I, <laughs> with the Navy and the Marines. And everybody knows I was a Marine, but... Um, and still am yeah. a Marine. But that's something that um, we can say. 
When you're in the Navy or the Army, you don't say, I'm a Navy, I'm an Army, but we can say, I'm a Marine. <laughs> When's your birthday? Our birthday is November 10th coming up. Okay. So that would be next month, our birthday is. But I um, would like to say thank you to Old Town Partners, put a well, well-deserved thank you to the, um, for the Fall Festival. It was the biggest event I think that we had ever in the past 20 years. Very well attended, everybody had a good time. Weather was nice, we had to, Mr. Parson, you're the new guy on the block, man. It's, it's, it's all on you. So if it would have rained, we would have been yelling at you then. But, but no, thank you, and um, everybody have a good, good week. Thank you. Not yet, Mr. Lee. Mr. Caputa, didn't you tell me one time that after the Navy was formed, they had to get the Marines to be able to take care of them and things like that, and that what happened? Yes, that is true, Mr. Lee. All right, so that's why the Marines are a few years younger. The Marines younger were designed so the Navy had some security on their ship. That's why the Marines are called leather necks, because they used to wear the leather around their necks. The Marines and the Navy are the only ones that, that wear it. Um, well, thank you all for that nice lesson. Okay, we're just going to move right along, because now you gave the mayor the floor. and. Um, I'm sure he'll talk about the Seabees. So, <laughs> Mayor? Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I, I was gonna invite uh, my son, Zach, he's retired from the Navy, along with uh, Robert Parsons, to help me hoist the uh, Navy flag uh, up the <laughs> flagpole in front of City Hall, the one that's in my office on my couch. We will, that will be flying on Friday in honor of Navy Day. Also, I have a check for $132,916.08 that I will give to Mr. McDaniel. Uh, Mr. Hessel, could you explain to us uh, what this settlement was for? This goes back quite a ways. Um, we had some damage due to, to, to our buildings due to a storm. Oh my gosh, what was it, 12 years ago <laughs> or longer? We've been um, continuing to make claims against Reliance Insurance which was placed in receivership probably eight years ago. I've lost track of some of the time, but this is the, uh, another payment towards the claim that we have. Um, I think this is the third or fourth payment that we have received, so I'm always glad to bring some money into the city coffers. If you give this to the city cook for me. And I thought if it was for winning the chili cook-off. <laughs> Can I just yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought, oh, I, uh, I saw you know. it. I was ready. I was like, oh, what am I going to say when I get, like, hit the lottery? When I heard about the, <laughs> when I heard the result of the chili, I think, you, you got to be kidding me. The president of the council is the winner and the wife's mirror is the second yeah. place. But, uh, uh, Mr. Was house and she was pouring. Right. Chili in <laughs> yeah, Mr. Jones, I've been talking with uh, some issues with Mr. Shildroth with MSD, so if you could get with me soon so I can know exactly what your uh, issues are. I have uh, had a conversation with Mr. Holscher as recently as last Thursday. And uh, we'll get, uh, I, don't, I don't know of any backtracking at all, but if you can give me some examples, I'll certainly take it up with him. Uh, and also, I apologize for not being available for the ward meeting for Ward 1, uh, 3, and 4. But uh, they have scheduled uh, a work session for the uh, 21st Century Missouri uh, Transportation Task Force that I'm a member of. We've had hearings all over the state. Our next hearing is in St. Louis on uh, October 18th at Merrimack Community College. I've uh, invited Rebecca Zoll to represent uh, North County Incorporated and also John Stifler to represent the uh, Building and Trades Council because uh, I think it's important to have uh, some input from the trades in this discussion. Uh, also, I'd like to take this opportunity on uh, Fall Festival is to thank Karen Goodwin and Diana Weininger. Uh, those two are the rocks uh, that make uh, the Valley of the uh, Fall. I've been saying this Valley of During my interviews yesterday, I said Valley of Flowers instead of Fall Festival about half the time, but Fall Festival. It's a, it's a baby of 
Karen Goodwin and Diana Weininger. And I just want to thank them for everything you've done for the last 20 years. Let's give them a th hand. <laughs> and Mr. Egan, we're going to have a tenant for the Del Taco. We're going to have a place called Crazy Bowls and Wraps. It's very popular, very healthy food. Congratulations. Uh, and I tell you, we have a resource close to here that we don't talk about. It's right across the street from uh, Miss Pagano's ward, right across the street from Dunnigan Park. And it's North County Tech. And I was at North County Tech last week for a news conference uh, about the uh, Associated General Contractors. And North County Tech is just a great resource, a great kid, this great place to send your, your uh, those that want to use their hands. Not everybody's uh, wired to go to college, folks. So we know there's a lot of kids, a lot of us, a lot of people are wired to use their hands, and North County Tech is a place to go. So if you want to go to North County Tech, you should buy a house in Florissant and send your kids to North County Tech. The Great Day St. Louis last week was one of the best ones we've ever had. The Fall Festival is one of the best ones we've ever had. Uh, the, uh, uh, the Race to the Shrine is going to be the best ever. And uh, we're just really setting some records. I, actually, I got to meet a celebrity yesterday. Uh, yesterday. I got to meet uh, Miss Missouri Princess. And I have a very a photograph that I put on our website. A uh, nice young lady, and I had a nice conversation with her. She was at the Fall Festival enjoying it. Last Friday, I was on a panel uh, for Rotary. Uh, it was a panel talking about literacy and peace. And uh, the guy, uh, we were with a uh, author of a book, uh, Paul Chapel, and he asked the audience a question. He says, now who in this audience would want to be called all kinds of names and told that they were worthless? And I said, well, don't, be, don't run for mayor then. <laughs> That's already been announced. Yeah, there's a lot of things that have already been announced. The, the D.A.R.E. costume party. That was not announced. October 20th, Friday, October 20th. We have four big D.A.R.E. events every year, and the costume party for Halloween is October 20th at JFK. And we have a public hearing for community development on October 23rd. We have a pumpkin ded dedication, a decorating on October 23rd at JFK. We got a lot of pumpkin stuff this year, a lot of Halloween stuff. Spooky snacks and crafts on October 26th at JFK. And then on Halloween itself at James J. Egan, we always have uh, stuff to do for, you know, trick-or-treaters at James J. Egan for those 12 and under. Uh, and then later on, I'll announce these other uh, things. But I do want to say we're going to have uh, uh, soldiers' wish list. Uh, we already started. Uh, we're collecting money for the soldiers' wish list. And uh, that's going to be at City Hall and at the Egan and JFK centers. So be sure and pay attention to that. And uh, that's, why, that's all I have, ma'am, Madam oh. President. Thanks. All right. We will be having a budget meeting on Saturday, October 14th, in the Council Chambers. And our next meeting will be October 23rd, 2017. Councilman Egan moves to adjourn, seconded by Mr. Jones. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all for attending.